morning, everybody. Welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, joined here by criminal defense attorney Randy Zellin. And thanks for joining us here on the network where we cover the most interesting live trials and legal stories in the news today. We have a lot going on, so let's get started right now. We have an update in another celebrity case, and this is of Jussie Smollett, the Empire star who claims that he was attacked by two masked men on January 29th at 2 a.m. He claims that they attacked him. They shouted homophobic slurs at him. They put a rope around his neck and threw a liquid on him. It's now being reported that that attack might have been staged and was a hoax. With more joining us is law enforcement expert and host here on the Law and Crime Network, Vincent Hill. Vincent, good morning to you and thanks for coming on. Hey, good morning, Jesse. We've got a lot going on in Chicago, don't we? We really do. So walk us through what the latest development is. Yeah, so the latest, Chicago police have been questioning two people's interests, as they're being called, in relation to this alleged attack on Smullett. Now, these two individuals, one actually worked for the show Empire. They're two brothers. They were uh, caught on a plane going to Nigeria. That plane was rerouted back to Chicago O'Hare. They were placed in the custody. I understand Chicago police also did a search warrant on their home where they seized a laptop computer and some bleach type substance. Now, of course, the allegation a couple of weeks ago was that a liquid substance was poured, poured on the actor during this attack. So police are in, uh, interviewing those two individuals right now, Jesse, as we speak. They also want to talk to Smullett one more time. I know they talked to him yesterday, but they say they still have more questioning for him regarding this alleged attack. Okay, so if this is true, if this was staged, what is the motivation behind this? Because I know there's been a lot of theories put forward about what the ta attack actually consisted of. He said, uh, at one point, we thought that the attackers were wearing uh, Make America Great Again hats. He said he never said that. There's been details that haven't been verified. So if this is true, and he did stage this, and the, the, sta you know, the officers can prove this, what exactly would the motivation behind this attack be? Well, it's unclear, Jesse. There's a war of words between Chicago police, local media, and actually the Fox Network, who produces the show Empire. Now, uh, local media has said that they've had sources say, hey, this was a hoax because Smollett was going to be written off the show. Now, Chicago police say that is unconfirmed. Fox News has denied that wholeheartedly, saying, hey, he was not going to be written off the show. So there's a uh, war of war words of what the motive would have been. Three weeks, there still has concrete proof that this attack occurred. Now, keep in mind, Chicago police reviewed 20 plus surveillance cameras in the area which would have caught this attack and they have yet to find any proof of that. Vincent, I know that your radar went up a little bit when this story broke. Um, how does it, authorities believe something could be staged? I mean, what was the first red flag? Well, I think there were many red flags, Jesse, especially me being an investigator that I am. I mean, keep in mind, this was probably the coldest night of the year in Chicago. Temperatures reached about 18 below zero. So the chances of these random people who allegedly may have written a letter to Fox just a few days later being out at the exact time, keep in mind the exact time, 1.30, 1.45 in the morning, and finding Smullett walking down the street, are just slim to none. And if you see on that image there, you don't see anyone else walking the streets, Jesse, because it was 17 below zero. And the fact that you have no video evidence of this, it just re really raises the question, was there really an attack here? Now, I want to talk about what would happen if this is shown to be an actual staged event. But before we do that, let's hear from the words from Jesse Smollett himself when he spoke on GMA. I went out to Walgreens thinking that they were 24 hours and to have a smoke. <laughs> uh, Walgreens was closed. Um, so I called him up and I said, hey, I'm going to run to Subway, which was across the street. and I'm going to get a salad. Do you want anything? I went to the Subway and got the order. During that time, I texted my manager thinking that he was still in Australia because he was on an Australian tour with one of his other clients. Mm -hmm. I said, yo, call me when you can. He called me immediately. And while he was on the phone, I uh, heard as I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> My name ain't Empire. Uh, and I didn't answer. I kept walking and then I heard Empire. So I turned around and I said, did you just say to me? And I see the uh, attacker. 
uh, masked. And he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling, you know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling by the stairs, uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back. And uh, then it just stopped. And they ran off. So Vincent, this is being investigated if any of what he just said is true. Now, you walk us through this. If it's proven that he fought, that this is a, a, a hoax, filing a false police report in Chicago, Illinois, is a very serious crime, is it not? That's right, Jesse. It's actually considered a class four felony, which you could face up to three years in prison and a $25,000 fine plus two years probation. So this is very serious. But I, I go back to the fact that there's really no evidence, even after this alleged attack, Smollett posted a picture on his social media with a scratch over his eye, which is not really consistent with being punched and, and smashed in the face. And one of the other red flags that stuck out is he said he kept this rope around his neck until police arrived. Now, keep in mind, if you were attacked and someone puts a rope around your neck, that's going to essentially strangle you, Jesse, your first natural instinct, you're not thinking evidence, DNA, you're trying to get that rope off your neck. So there were so many things with this story that really weren't consistent with an actual attack. Okay, but let me ask you this. Let's say this attack was real and investigators have to come forward and say, you know what, this attack was real. We believe him. And now we are trying to identify the suspects. Do investigators come forward and apologize? I mean, what is the next step moving forward here uh, in terms of this investigation? Yeah, if, if the attack is real, then absolutely. Uh, if they need to apologize, they would. I don't think at this point they do because they're saying, hey, we haven't said that this is a hoax yet. They're actually being really uh, tight-lipped about the investigation, which is a good thing for Chicago police. But I don't think it's on a whim that they actually led to these two brothers in Nigeria. They did the search warrant on their home. One of those individuals works for Empire, has worked for Empire, and they happen to be out at the exact same time of this alleged attack, Jesse. I mean, in an investigation, there's no such thing as a coincidence. You have to look at the totality of the evidence here and what it actually suggests happened that night. What is what is the smoking gun here? Are you looking for communications? Are they looking for text messages, letters, some sort of idea to see a conspiracy here? I mean, again, what are they looking for in these raids? Yeah, absolutely. So the Chicago police had originally asked Mullet for his cell phone because, hey, you heard in that interview, he said he was on the phone with his manager. It took several days for him to provide that. And those rec records, Jesse, were actually redacted. But that doesn't necessarily mean police can't get a search warrant for those records and get an unredacted copy to see if there was communication between these two brothers and Smullett just around the time of the attack. They're also still going to look at more surveillance footage to see if anything is picked up in that where maybe... The three were seen prior to this attack and then going their separate ways. So this investigation is still ongoing, even though I believe it points to what we we know uh, happened versus didn't happen. The investigation is still going on. Vincent Hill, thank you so much for coming on to talk about this latest development. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Jesse. Always good to see you. All right, everybody, we're going to switch gears. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to recap some of the most memorable trials we covered here on Law and Crime, because unfortunately, we don't have a live feed in a courtroom today, but that's OK. We have a lot to discuss. So stay tuned here on Law and Crime. We'll be right back.